Welcome, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here with you again. Also, I'd like to welcome everyone who's joined us on the internet today. It's a universal community formed specifically for changing the subject. If you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own. And if you don't like the subject, change it. We're here to change the subject. The subject that's going on in the material world, as far as we're concerned, is substandard. And we're not going to take it anymore. Therefore, we've, we've taken shelter in this institution, which was founded by His Divine Grace, A.C. Paktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, whom you see seated here on this beautiful seat of esteem. He is the founder means it was he conceived the idea of an institution which is specifically to promote Krishna consciousness and he's the Acharya, which means the one who set the standards and taught by example how to follow them. So an institution with an Acharya is very fortunate because everyone needs someone to look up to and to see the example of. And we need standards to live by, otherwise the mind will take us in a million different directions, as Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita. Vyavasayatmika buddhir ekeha kurunandana bahu shaka hyanantascha buddhayo vyavasayinam. Bahu shaka means many branched. Those who don't have a specific line to follow and a set of guides to emulate will take any path that comes along. As it is said, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So today I'm here to specifically talk about changing the subject. How to change the subject of your life. Because if you change the subject, you change your fortune. Change the subject, change your fortune. Basically, we create our own fortune. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Purusha prakriti stohi bhunkte prakriti jan gunan karanam guna sangosya sarasad yoni janmasu. That's from the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna tells the cause of the good and bad things that happen to us in life. And he says the cause is our association with the modes of material nature. And one of the most efficient ways in which one associates with the, or intimate ways, with the three modes of material nature is through hearing what you hear about. And the Vedas are specifically focused on hearing, therefore they're called shruti, that which is heard. We are primarily a sonic theology. We teach what the Vedas teach, and that is that anavriti shabdat, anavriti shabdat. By transcendental sound, shabdat, one becomes uncovered. And the opposite is true also. By hearing sound vibration that is concerned with the lower realm of material of the material world, which is the material world, one will be filled with cares and anxieties and covered by the three modes of material nature. So there's a great distinction made in the Upanishads, especially we have available to us the Shriya Upanishad, which was translated by our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, one of the most important Upanishads, the most of important of the Upanishads. How many Upanishads are there? At least 108. 108. So there's 108 Upanishads. And the Shriya Upanishad is specifically important. It very specifically talks about Isha, the Supreme Controller. 
so in the Sri Upanishad in Mantra 10, it is said, Anyadevahur vidyaya, anyarahur avidyaya, iti shushum dhiranam yinas tad vichichakshire. That there's a difference in the kind of knowledge that you cultivate in this world. And it distinguishes two kinds of knowledge. One is so-called knowledge, and the other is real knowledge. Anyadevahur vidyaya, anyarahur avidyaya. Anyat means difference. So there's a difference, it says, in, in the way your life will go, the way your fortune will, will come to you, good or bad, according to the kind of knowledge that you're taking in. Anyad evohur vidyaya. And that means the cultivation of knowledge. It means what you're actively looking at, what you're learning will direct you in a certain direction. Anyad evohur vidyaya, anyarahur avidyayat. Avidyayat means the opposite of knowledge. Avidyayat, it means actually it's nescience, but it's presented as knowledge. Iti shushumadhiranam. This information that is being spoken of in this verse comes from the dhira, means those who are undisturbed by the world. They don't have a vested interest in the material world. Therefore, they're aloof from it. Therefore, they have perspective, they have objectivity, and they can present what is real knowledge. Iti shushuma, we heard this from them. Iti shushuma dhiranam yenas tad vichichakshire. This knowledge is being presented by those undisturbed authorities who clearly explained it. The difference between knowledge and ignorance, which is also presented as knowledge, but we call it so-called knowledge. Though, so, this is an important beginning in spiritual life to know that there's a difference between knowledge and so-called knowledge. Now, everyone has some form of worship. Some people worship I don't know all the Bollywood stars. In fact, I don't know any of them. I'm happy to say. <laughs> I'm proud to say. <laughs> I don't know any Bollywood stars. But if I did, who would be the top of all the Bollywood stars? Anyone? <laughs> Mike. There you go. It's on now. <laughs> I think that's the volume effect. Actually, yeah. I even shudder to hear the name because it's going to, like, go ahead. I'm bracing myself. <laughs> Amitabh Bachchan. Okay, whatever you said. Many people worship that person. Is it a male or female? It's a man. Yeah. Man. So a lot of people idolize that person. And there's a kind of worship. In America, we had a famous musician named Elvis Presley. Do you ever hear of him? Elvis Presley is hometown is a place of pilgrimage. It's called Graceland. People go to Graceland, I believe it's in Tennessee, and they go there as a kind of worship. To show honor, he was called, as in his nickname was the King. So, Everyone has some uh, kind of knowledge they're taking in, and everyone also has some sort of worship. Now, interestingly, this word worship comes from two words. Of course, the word ship is an affix you put on the end of uh, the, the, a word, and it, it turns it into a noun. So, it used to be worth-ship. The word worth What's something worth to you? What's its value, right? So worthship turn into worship. Worthship to worship. It means what you consider to have value. That's where you put your attention. And this word worship, it means to adore or revere. To give adoration or reverence. And the word reverence comes from a Latin word which means to fear. 
In other words, that object is so awesome in, its origin, in the original sense of the term that you fear that object out of reverence. You feel some trepidation even about approaching. And the word adoration means you have some love or affinity for that object that you're worshiping. So everyone ha feels some object in this world has some worth, and therefore it's worship that they offer. Adoration, they develop affinity for it, adoration for that object. And again, the Sri Yashapanishad gives us some important information in the mantra 13. Anyadevahur sambhavad, anyadahur sambhavad, iti shushumadiranam yinas tatvichakshire. And it says that, similar to the other verse, there's two things you can worship. One is that which is sambhavat, which means the supreme, the supreme personality of Godhead, that which is supreme. And the other word, one is asambhavat, which means that which is not supreme. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it? There's a difference in the outcome. Therefore, it says anyad, there's a difference between worshiping the supreme and that which is not supreme. And this also was told by the great dhiras, those who are undisturbed. They clearly explained it. There's a difference between these two things. Now, where does that leave us? Knowing that there's a difference. There's two kinds of knowledge, so-called knowledge and knowledge. And there's two kinds of worship we can perform in this world. One is worship of that which is, and that which is, what does that leave us with? A choice. <laughs> we have a choice. So this is a, this is a revelation, that we actually have a choice. And that's why today's subject, the mantra for this class is, change the subject. If you don't like what you're listening to, if what you're listening to, paying attention to, worshiping, studying, is not bringing you the result that you are hoping for, change the subject. That's what you can do. And that's altogether possible because Krishna doesn't leave us in this world without options. No one can say we don't have options. He's given us almost too many options, some people say. Why did God give me so many options? When people fall under the influence of avidya and they become addicted to worshiping asambhavat, that which is not supreme, and they're victimized by the modes of material nature because of their bad choice, then they may say, why did God give me so much choice? and so many things to choose from, free will, and the variety of the world. That's his kindness. So, in a story in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the great Srila Vyasadeva, who is the compiler, the editor of the Vedas, he made the one Veda in two, four. And then from there, he comprised composed the Mahabharata, which contains Bhagavad Gita, the, the jewel of all scriptures of the world. Then he also uh, brought out many itihasas, or histories. And the histories, the, sm the smritis, the itihasas, they give very detailed information about how one can become self-realized, how one can direct one's attention towards Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But at one point in his service, he became morose, unhappy. Did you ever become morose or unhappy in your service? 
all the time. <laughs> all the time. It's altogether possible, let's just vote on this, it's altogether possible to become morose in this world while performing your duty as a mother, as a father, as a worker. True? Yes. False? Okay. It's true by the votes we've taken here today that you can become morose in the execution of your duty as a mother, as a father, as a worker. And Srila Vyasadeva, who would imagine such an exalted soul? He's the literary incarnation of Krishna in this world, but he becomes, at a particular point, morose in doing his service. But he's such an advanced soul that he knows there has to be a solution. He doesn't just become morose and not do anything about it, but he begins to look inside and say, what is the cause of this moroseness? And to gain help, he goes to his spiritual master. And who is his spiritual master? Narada Muni. He asked Narada Muni, I'm doing everything I thought I should do. I'm doing my duty, but I'm morose. Please tell me, what is the cause? I'm strict in my vows. I've followed everything that I should follow according to the rules of the Vedas. I've done my service as completely as I possibly can, but I'm morose. I'm not happy. There's something amiss in my heart. And then Narada Muni tells him that in all your work, you've missed the point. You haven't given the complete description of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna and his pastimes. Hari Charyanu Varnanam. Hari is who? So everyone say Hari. 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 Hari is a name for the Lord. Hari Charyanu Varnanam. Lo and behold, Hari has activities. Hari has a name. Hari has qualities. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the reservoir of all mellows. All rasas means relationships. Everything flows from Lord Hari. In fact, in the Bhagavad Gita, he says we can observe even in this world the tastes and the varieties that we see are all coming from me. Matak paratanam nanyat kinchidasti dananjaya maisaravamidam protam sutri manigana iva. First of all, he says, as a pearl necklace is hold, held together by a thread. Although you can't see the thread, you see that it's held together by the thread. Similarly, everything you see in this world is held together by me. Another name of Krishna or Hari is Otam Protam. Everyone say Otam Protam. It's a name for Lord Hari. Otam Protam. Because Otam Protam in a cloth, the cloth you're wearing on your back today, is made of vertical and horizontal threads held together, some by silk, some by cotton, some by rayon. And otam protam means the vertical and horizontal. Therefore, the word otam protam means in the context of Lord Hari that he pervades everything, he holds everything together, every atom. He's present in every atom. He's there within every atom of the universe. He's fully present, fully present, fully present in every atom. Present in the heart of every living entity. He knows everything that's going on in the universe all at the same time. Vedaham samatitani vartamana charjana bhavishani chabutani mamtu veda nakashchana. He says, I know everyone and I know everything at all times and all places and all circumstances. And I can't even remember what I was doing the day before yesterday. And Krishna in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita tells Arjuna, I knew it was going on 40 million years ago, 400 million years ago. Arjuna said, how, how, what are you talking about? <laughs> because his transcendental body is perfect. 
it's not subject to decay like the material body and it, he doesn't lose his memory his senses are completely perfect and interchangeable and everything in this world is held together by his energy he says although I'm everywhere I'm within everything still have my independent existence at the same time and he names in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita many ways in which we can see him in the energies of the world for instance rasoham apsakontaya he says I'm the taste in water Prabhashmi shashishuri yujoho. I am the sound in ether. Pranavak sarvavedishu. Shabdake purusham nishu. I am the ability in man. I am the seed of all existences. Bijamam sarvabhutanam. So Krishna is everywhere and everything at all times and places. His transcendental body is perfect. So, Srila Vyasadeva said, Why am I morose? And Narada Muni says, because you haven't taught the right thing. You haven't taught how to very specifically hear and chant about Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I'm going to read you a verse that comes when Narada Muni himself is telling Srila Vyasadeva about his own life and how he personally experienced a change in his life when he changed the subject. And what is the topic of this talk tonight? Change the subject, change your fortune. And if you go outside after this class and someone says, what was that guy talking about in there? You'll say? And if you get in the car and someone turns on the radio to KGO radio, you'll say? And then they switch it over and you can hear the broadcast coming from ISV. You'll say, I changed, I changed the subject and now I've changed my fortune. So, Narada Muni was just a little boy in a very obscure place with in, coming from an unnoticed background because he didn't even have a father. He couldn't even say who his lineage is and where his lineage is from. And some sages came and stayed at his house during Chaturmasya. This is just good luck. But if you ever get the opportunity to have devotees in your house, that's the number one way for grahastas or anybody else to make rapid advancement. All you have to do is get the house ready for them and have them over. Because if you have an advanced soul in your house, then you have to change the subject. <laughs> Whatever else you were talking about gets changed. Whatever programs you were watching, they go off. They, everything goes back to the center of Krishna consciousness. So if you have a sadhu in your house, you'll feel automatically uplifted. Narada Muni had, a, had sadhus in his house for four months. The mother invited them in, took care of them during the Chaturmasya, and you can imagine, for four months, that'll have an impact. And what were they doing all day? They'd get up early, they'd hear and chant, they'd hear and chant all day. One of my god brothers, Rameshwar Prabhu, was just writing, to, just wrote to me yesterday about how he was with Prabhupada in 1977. Near the last part of, of Prabhupada's life, before he left us, and, and one comment, he said, as he was working as his secretary at that time. He said, I, was, I stayed for one month on Prabhupada's no sleep program. And he said, I didn't feel tired for that whole month because I was so engaged in Prabhupada's service. But he, he mentioned that Prabhupada was on a no sleep program because he was so engaged 24 hours a day that practically he didn't sleep. He took a couple of so-called naps, but no sleeping, only chanting, hearing, and writing his books, and managing, and so forth. So, for four months, the, during the rainy season, the sages are, were hearing and chanting in the house of the child, Narada Muni and his mother. And because of that association, his heart changed. And he became inspired in the process of self-realization. And he also did some service 
to those sages. Little boy. And once he asked, could I take the remnants of your food? So he took that. And also this was a cause for change in heart. And after they left, he was a different person. Have you ever had that happen by association? You have some association and then you're never the same afterwards. You feel inspired to go in a new direction in your life. This is the power of association. And when you get association with sadhus, it is said in the Shastra, sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarva shastra koi, lava matra, sarva, sar, sadhu sangha, sarva siddhi hoi. Lava matra means eighth of a second, twelfth of a second. How, how long is that? It's very short. If you could get a lava matra of sadhu sangha, which means association with an advanced spiritual personality, then sarva siddhi hoi, you can get all perfection. Just a twelfth, twelfth of a second, that's all. It, what to speak of four months. So now, the sage is left, and the boy, Narada, was there with his mother, single mother, and she died. Went out to milk the cow, got bit by a snake, agent of Kala, eternal time, destiny came, took away his mother. There he is all alone, no one to care for him. But now he was so inspired, he just went out walking through the, through the mountains, through the forests, through the cities. He would go past mining areas where people were taking minerals from the ground. And he was observing everywhere he went how God's energies were working. On Saturday we had a gathering here where we were sharing realizations from the year. Good thing to do at the end of the year. Recollect what happened. Learn from the past. And one of the parents was talking about how many of the children participated in our outreach during the year, going door to door to give people Krishna Prashadam and transcendental books and so forth. And sometimes they would feel a little hungry as they were going on. Not that we don't feed them. <laughs> they get hungry a lot. So I'm a little thirsty, I'm a little hungry, and then someone would open the door and say, here, have some water. Here, would you like a banana? You see kids, you say, here, you give them something. And they were starting to realize, oh, look, abundance, if you just serve, and there's an abundance in nature, everything comes, Krishna's providing. And Narada Muni was, before he was the Muni, he was just a child, but he was observing in nature how everything's going on in a uniform way. Krishna is maintaining every living entity. It's said in the Shastra, Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam Eku Bahunam Yovididhati Kaman. That means there's one supreme controller. And there are many conscious living entities who are being fed by him, being maintained by him, who are controlled by him. Those are the nityanam, the plurality of living entities. And if one observes in nature, as Lord Jesus Christ said, just look around and see the birds. Homework, go watch the birds and see how they're living right now at this time of year. It's a little cold outside, although California is actually warm by most standards in America and around the world, except for Hawaii and a few other places. The Birds are being taken care of quite nicely. I look out and I don't see any food, but they're eating plentifully and they have a place to live. And when the winter comes, all the animals, their coat gets thicker. They're just naturally taken care of. So Narada was observing all these energies. And in his commentary, Srila Prabhupada says, we should all look and see how the energies of God are working because we can learn from them and see how he's maintaining everyone. So Narada, who had learned how to meditate and how to chant the glories of the Lord from these great sages, was hearing and chanting, and he went to a quiet forest and he sat down and he began to meditate and say his mantra and then 
he actually had a direct vision of Krishna. And he went into complete ecstasy and then the vision disappeared. And then mechanically he tried to get the same vision back, but he couldn't. And Krishna spoke to him in an unembodied voice saying that you can't do it mechanically. It came the first time by your sincere desire and by my special grace, but mechanically you can't do this. You can't see me. And he dedicated the rest of his life to the process of hearing and chanting about Krishna. And at the end of his life, it's mentioned how just as lightning and illumination occur simultaneously, when he left his mortal body behind, he simultaneously acquired a spiritual body, which is full of light, and is not subject to the anomalies of the material world as this physical body is. So he changed by hearing about Krishna. The subject in his house changed and then he changed. And it gave him so much momentum as he kept doing it, kept his, the subject matter, Hari Charanu Vananam, constantly hearing about Krishna, that he was able to attain the highest perfection in spiritual life. Now, to solve the problem of Vyasadev, which is that he was feeling morose, Narada is telling his own story. And this is part of it. He says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, 6th chapter, 35th verse, which we'll just have projected on the screen. And as we're doing that, we'll just take a couple of reflections. It means one thing you've heard so far that's stuck in your mind. Nirakula. Okay, we need a microphone. What? Yeah. You mentioned that Narada Muni asked the sages for um, if he could honor their remnants. And is, is that the proper etiquette that you have to ask before you honor the remnants? I don't know about proper, it's nice. But the other example we have is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Kalidas had a goal to take the remnants of every Vaishnava in Bengal and that he would go to people's homes and ask for the remnants and most Vaishnavas would refuse and then he would hide outside their house. And the system in India at the time, they would take, I guess at this time too, I've noticed, <laughs> they take outside and throw it. There was a, a place to throw it, uh, the, the leaf plate. And Kalidas would hide near that pit, and then he'd come out, and he'd take the leaf plate, and he'd steal the remnants. That's okay, too. Was that an right answer? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Because that's what I do. Oh. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Right here on the internet, did you, <laughs> busted. Watch out for her. <laughs> okay. Other reflections that you heard, something you heard stuck in your mind. Yes? I was just um, thinking about how in the second chapter, Divinity and Divine Service, um, there are a couple of verses that talk about how by serving um, how by serving exalted souls and pure devotees um, you get, develop a desire to listen and then when you listen then you get purified and then you start st situated in a mode of goodness and then we see that exactly reflected in Narad Muni's life over here. So that was Yeah, it. it's nice to have an example. Yesterday Rajesh mentioned to, to have an, to have what would the phrase he used? see a personal example. Inspiration is one thing, but to have a role model. If you have a role model in your life and you see someone just doing something, then suddenly you become inspired. Say, oh, that's how you do it. Not, not much talking needed. Yes? Uh, you were talking about association, like of sages. If we associate with um, exalted devotees, we get a taste and we ourselves, we, we progress very fast. But, and I was thinking that association is so powerful. The opposite is also so true. If we associate with the wrong uh, people, then their bad habits, somehow, like even if we don't want, they'll, they, 
get transferred to us. Wow, what a what a um, important scientific discovery. The essence of all scientific discoveries, because, or as confirmed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Asat Sangatyag e Vaishnavachar. He said, when asked, what is a Vaishnav? He said, a Vaishnav is one who avoids bad association. Asat Sangha means people are absorbed in the temporary material world, and that's where their goals are. Asatsanga Tyag. He that person, a Vaishnava, is somebody who gives that up. A Vaishnava Char. That's the behavior of a real Vaishnav. Yes. Hare Krishna. Um, so this um, point complements both of the above points spoken. Uh, the first one about Dhir Purush, how self realization is achieved by steady or undisturbed people in uh, spiritual life. And then second, you mentioned about um, Sadhu Sangha power in that one eighth or one twelfth of a second, hard to measure, but uh, I think unignorable truth. Yeah. So. Thank you very much. Nice reflections. Two more? Thank you, Maharaj, for bringing this, uh, such a very nice um, incidents from the Bhagavatam. And I basically uh, always like this uh, because, as you told, like everyone becomes morose in their life. And we can see that uh, the person who has written all the Vedas, when how he can, after compiling everything, how when he becomes morose, what is the solution for this? And then when we go through all this, uh, uh, um, as the progression of the story reveals, then we get to know the solution as well. So it's, um, it's a very <laughs> comforting thing. Very nice. Last one. Shalabahu. Hare uh, Krishna. One of the things uh, stuck in my mind that, that uh, the, the whole world is connected with him like a horizontal and vertical waving of the clothes. I think that's very powerful. Iti vishva vidam vishnu otam protam jasamstitam. Shastra says that this Vishnu is everywhere, just like the horizontal and vertical threads in a cloth. Otam protam jasamstitam. That's how he's situated everywhere. Now I'm going to read this original verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is followed by a commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, so we can experience Sadhu Sangha by hearing. If you take the Vani or the instruction of a great elevated person, you will also get the same effect. You'll notice if you are sitting home alone and you pick up a book like the Srimad Bhagavatam, and we would recommend the commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and you sit and read, you'll feel a direct communion with the author, and you'll get that same kind of inspiration as if you were, as he were directly sitting there giving you association. This is the power of Vani. It's available to everyone. That's why we distribute so many books, to give people the opportunity to have that association and to change the subject. Shall I read this verse? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, I'll say, please repeat. Yamadi bir yoga patai Kamaloba hato muhuhu Mukunda sevaya yadvat Tat madhana shamyati. And the translation is It is personally experienced by me, Narda Muni speaking, that those who are always full of cares and anxieties due to desiring contact of the senses with their objects can cross the ocean of nations on a most suitable boat, the constant chanting of the transcendental activities of the Personality of Godhead. I'm sorry? 
1635. Try 34. It is personally experienced by me that those who are fully, full, always full of cares and anxieties due to desiring contact of the senses with their objects can cross the ocean of nescience on a most suitable boat, the constant chanting of the transcendental activities of the personality of Godhead. Purport, the symptom of a living being is that he cannot remain silent even for some time. He must be doing something, thinking of something, or talking about something. Generally, the materialistic men think and discuss about topics which satisfy their senses. But as these things are exercised under the influence of the external illusory energy, such sensual activities do not actually give them any satisfaction. On the contrary, they become full with cares and anxieties. This is called maya, or what is not. That which cannot give them satisfaction is accepted as an object for satisfaction. That which cannot give them satisfaction is accepted as an object for satisfaction. Clue. That which cannot give them satisfaction is accepted as an object of, for satisfaction. So Narada Muni, by his personal experience, says that satisfaction for such frustrated beings Engaged in sense gratification is to chant always the activities of the Lord. The point is that the subject matter only should be changed. The point is that the subject matter only should be changed. No one can check the thinking activities of a living being, nor the feeling, willing, or working processes. But if one wants actual happiness, one must change the subject matter only. Instead of talking about the politics of a dying man, one might discuss the politics administered by the Lord himself. Instead of relishing activities of the cinema artists, one can turn his attention to the activities of the Lord with his eternal associates like the gopis and lakshmis. The almighty personality of Godhead by his causeless mercy descends on the earth and manifests activities almost on the line of, world, of the worldly men but at the same time, extraordinarily, because he is almighty. He does so for the benefit of all conditioned souls so that they can turn their attention to transcendence. By doing so, the conditioned soul will gradually be promoted to the transcendental position and easily cross the ocean of nations, the source of all miseries. This is stated from personal experience by such an authority as Sri Narada Muni. And we can have the same experience also if we begin to follow in the footsteps of the great sage, the dear most devotee of the Lord. So the topic of this presentation tonight is change the subject, change your fortune. All you have to do is change the subject, what you're listening to now. There is subject matter abundantly available everywhere in the material world through the electronic media, through the printed media, and so forth, and through the association of people we um, meet to hear various things. And if you hear those things which are affected by the three modes of material nature, then we also become affected by the three modes of material nature. And if you hear those things which are transcendental, very specifically, Hari Charanu Varnanam, which, which means the character, quality, pastimes, names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then very naturally, without any extraneous endeavor, we'll also come to the transcendental platform because hearing and chanting is on the, of the names of God and the qualities and character of God is on the transcendental platform. It is divine service itself, the very act of hearing. Interesting point that Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur makes that the percentage that you have rati or taste for topics other than Krishna's pastimes 
is the percentage to which you don't have rati or taste for Krishna's activities. Shall I say it again? The percentage that you have taste for topics other than Krishna's pastimes is the percentage to which you don't have taste for Krishna's activities. <laughs> so the purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement is education. It's an educational movement. Prabhupada said this himself. He said it's not a religious movement, but an educational movement. It's meant to teach people how to discriminate between sound vibration, which will cause anxiety and difficulty in life, and which will orient one towards the bodily conception of life, which means one identifies with the body and thinks that I am this body. And then tries to get comfortable in a world that is constantly changing in a body that's constantly changing and this is the cause of suffering. So ultimately this kind of education that's being taught by Srila Prabhupada and those who are propagating his movement is to free people from suffering and situate them in complete happiness. Difficulty comes when I fix my desires on something that is moving <laughs> and the world then moves against my desires. Sometimes very suddenly the world moves against my desires. This is called calamity because calamity means a sudden change of fortune comes along and what I thought was stable becomes suddenly changed. We see this, people live in a country and then suddenly the country gets divided in half. And if you're on the wrong half, then you have to leave and leave behind all your fortune. Does that sound familiar? Where has that happened before? Oh, <laughs> on the subcontinent. Media. I read that book, Freedom at Midnight. I read it when I was in Bangalore. I, was, I couldn't stop reading. I read it all day long. And they looked out the window and I said, oh, I'm right here. And, but so many people were uh, unceremoniously moved out of their, what they thought was their homeland. But everyone's unceremoniously moved out of their homeland. So the, the less dependent we are on the world for our happiness, the more we can actually achieve real happiness. And the more I'm dependent on the, the changing world for my happiness, the more I'll suffer. I see some funny things in my garden. One of them is, if I'm working and I lean a shovel up against the gardening shed, and I come back two days later, sometimes a spider will make a web between the handle of the shovel and the gardening shed. And I think of that as a microcosm of this whole world. From the perspective of Mahavishnu, for whom the manifestation of this whole material world is one exhalation, and it's all destroyed and wound up again after he inhales, as he inhales. So those of us who are making a permanent claim here in the material world, this is my country, this is my place, this is my land, people fight over it. It's my perspective of the spider <laughs> who builds a web between the handle of the shovel and the garden house, not knowing that it's going to move very soon and the whole thing is going to be torn up. So don't become oriented towards the temporary. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhogai Shvarya Prasaktanam Taya Prahita Chaitasam. Vyavasayat Mika Budhir Samadao Na Vadhiyate. Very instructive verse. Bhoga Aishvarya. Bhoga means enjoyment in the material world. And Aishvarya means the bling, the, the, the Aishvarya, the opulence of the material world. So he looks and thinks, oh, I got to have that. That looks expensive, I gotta have that too. <laughs> a lot of people have that attraction that you see something and you gotta have it because it's a specific thing. Boga Aishvarya, some attractive feature in something material. Boga Aishvarya Prasaktanam, and that means attachment. Taya Prahita Chaitasam. Hrita comes from the root word hrit, which means to, to take away, to steal. Aprahita means. A person is uh, 
his consciousness, aprahita chaitasam, chaita means the consciousness. So a person's consciousness, his thoughts, are stolen. That's why you don't get any peace of mind. Your thoughts were stolen. Your thoughts are stolen because of attachment to uh, temporary things, which are going to be taken away. And therefore, Krishna says, samadao navadiyate, that resolute determination called vyavasayatmika buddhi, your intelligence is fixed on self-realization, Samadhao is the samadhi. You're fixed in that consciousness. Navadhyate doesn't take place if someone's thoughts are stolen away by the opulence or ideas of enjoying something in the material world. And how do you remedy, remedy that? Change the subject. The same subject matter that my mind is attached to here, the same opulence that is attached to here, in the material world is available in the spiritual world. In fact, what I'm looking at here is only a reflection of the real thing. And this, Krishna says, is the way to cure the weakness of heart through which I'm attached to the things of this world is to realize it's a reflection. Why would you go for the reflection if you can have the real thing? If you think there's something in the reflection, then you'll continue to go for it over and over again. So how can one do that? Change the subject. Change the subject from politics to Krishna's politics. Ordinary politics to hearing about Uddhava, instructing Krishna in practical matters. The activities of Krishna in Vrindavan are very beautiful and sweet. His childhood pastimes, one can hear about those in the Srimad Bhagavatam or Krishna book, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if you become attached to those activities, then the result will be the opposite. When we're filled with peace and knowledge and detachment from unhealthy things. I said earlier, I was talking about the word worship. It's worth repeating because a few more people came in, but I like it so much I'm going to say it again. Worship comes from the words worth Ship. Originally means worth ship. Worth means what some, some value, something has a value. And ship makes it a noun. So worth ship becomes worship. In fact, you can say it and people say you have a lisp. Worth ship. But it's where you, where you think your real value in life is, that's where you place your attention. So how to change the subject? The process of devotional service means to have a regulated way in which to hear from especially Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. And the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nashtra Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. And that is by regularly hearing from the Srimad Bhagavatam. All the things that are troublesome, that are stealing away your thoughts, they'll diminish. And you'll become attached to the real thing, to the reality. And then you have real ground to stand on. Nashta prayishu abadrishu. Now, sometimes people say, I have so many unwanted things within the heart that seem to compel me to do what I do, which is to be attached to the impermanent things in this material world. Has that ever happened to anybody? That you have knowledge, you have determination in devotional service, but you still can't give up listening to or participating in the temporary things of the material world, which we've already heard about lead us to anxiety. Possible? Yes. Krishna mentions this in the 11th chapter, 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Jata Shadama Katasu Nirvina Sarva Karmasu. Veda Dukat Nakam Kamams Pritya Ge Pyanishvara. He says that even after faith has been born in the heart of somebody who's practicing devotional service, that this is the most important thing the chanting, hearing God's name, reading from the scripture. And that person feels nirvina sarva karmasu. 
he or she is disgusted with all kinds of material engagements. Nirvina sarva karmasu means, I know this is not a, a savory place, the material world, and engagement is not very, and here is, is, leads to misery. Veda dukatna kankam kamam. So he knows that material desires and engagementism leads to dukh, misery. But, paritjage pyanishvara, he still can't give it up. <laughs> Possible? Absolutely. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives uh, a solution, which you're really going to like. Because in the stories about Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, especially in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, especially in Krishna's childhood, well, throughout his life in Vrindavan, every day Krishna kills a demon, at least one. <laughs> Did you know that? That's an exciting life. You go with Krishna for a picnic, and all along the way, he kills a python that has, it's so big <laughs> that the, his upper lip touches the sky, and Krishna walks in its mouth and inflates himself and kills the demon and so forth. He killed horse demons and donkey demons and duck demons and so many different kinds of demons. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur lists all these demons in a book called the Chaitanya Shikshamrita. He says that each one of them is an archetype of one of the anartas or unwanted things that I carry, the bad habits, unwanted desires that I carry in my heart. And I'll read you what he says we should do to get rid of those unwanted things within our heart. The devotee who worships the holy name should first petition the Lord for the strength to cast out all these unfavorable tendencies and should pray thus before Lord Hari on a daily basis. By doing this regularly, the devotee's heart will eventually become purified. Sri Krishna has killed a number of demons which may arise in the kingdom of one's heart. So in order to destroy these demons, the devotee must cry humbly before the Lord and admit defeat, and the Lord will nullify these contaminations by killing each one of the demons. And I'll tell you what they represent. Putana represents the pseudo-guru, which may either be a person or one's own conditioned mind. Sometimes there are teachers which are mentioned in the Sri Shapanishad. There's, as I said, false knowledge, and someone's teaching so-called knowledge, misleading knowledge, which isn't from the Vedas, which is a concoction, a deviation from it. it may attract people, because everyone might think, oh, this is a very nice thing, very popular, and then be misled. So this is like Putana, because she dressed up like a mother to give milk, but it was poison. So this tendency to go to the false guru, this is killed by hearing about the pastime of Putana. Also, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that we have this mind, which Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, may be one's best friend or one's enemy. You, go, you want to do the right thing, and then the mind says, no, no, do that, do the bad things. Like, who said that? <laughs> Your false guru mind said that. <laughs> Don't listen to the false guru mind. <laughs> that mind should be reformed, and one can reform that mind by hearing of the pastime of Bhutana. Practically speaking, because the pastime is absolute, Krishna is personally present there, and as he kills Putana, the tendency in one's heart is simultaneously vanquished. This is what Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying. Then Shakatasura. Do you know, remember who the Shakata demon was? The second demon Krishna killed. When Krishna was just a little baby, there was a festival that they were holding, celebrating the killing of Putana. And they put, uh, or maybe it was his uh, first month, he was just three months old at that time. Shakatasura was a cart. He had entered within the cart, this demon, subtle body. And there he was hovering. And little, as the residents of Vrindavan were celebrating, chanting Krishna's names, Mother Yashoda put Krishna down what looked like a safe place, right under the cart right next to the edge of the cart. And Krishna, who's just a little baby, he started kicking his little soft lotus feet in the air. 
And just with a little touch of his lotus foot, he smashed the whole cart. And all the pots and pans and everything went flying in every direction. What kind of a noise that makes. When pots hit the floor, everyone feels like the world's coming to the end. Let's think of a whole cartload. And the cart came undone. This big, hearty, uh, robust cart came unhinged because of Krishna, the touch of his lotus feet. And all the pots and pans went flying everywhere. And the Shakatasura demon was killed in that way. And here's what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says is destroyed when we hear about that pastime. Shakatasura represents the tendency to carry the cartload of bad habits accumulated in this life and previous lives. A cartload of bad habits. Does that sound familiar? How are you doing? Fine, except for I feel like I'm carrying a cartload of bad habits. How do you get rid of that? It's not so easy. You can go to self-help seminars and start on a little program. But in the Bhagavad, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's mentioned that these kinds of temporary measures are just like burning the grass on the surface. But the next time it rains, they come up again. You'll see a little, the grass is all dead. No, it's not. It's all living right under the ground. It'll come right back up again. How do you get rid of the actual tendency for these bad habits? And the Bhagavatam says, by hearing about Krishna's pastimes, it will solve the problem. So if you change the subject, you change your fortune. So the topic of tonight's class is? And if anybody asks you when you walk outside, what, what was that guy talking about? Then you'll say? And if you get in the car and they turn on the radio, on the KGO radio, about some football game or something like that, you'll say? And you get home and somebody turns on the television, you'll say? In that case, you could say, get, you could cut the cord, just cut the cord. That's the solution to the television. You get some shears, not when it's plugged in, though, and you cut the cord. And that will save yourself about um, maybe 30 or 40 years on your life, just from that one act of defiance. And he goes on, I have a chart here of the various demons that Krishna killed and th th what they represent, which anarta they represent. But the fact is this, if you hear about Krishna and you hear Krishna's instructions and you chant Krishna's name mystically, magically, automatically, quickly, should I say it again? Yes. Mystically, magically, quickly, automatically, these tendencies for worthship of things that aren't worth anything will diminish. And one's attention will go to the real substance, which is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his instructions in the spiritual world. It's worth looking into. And if one can simply make one good decision a day, this would be a resolution for the year. I make one good decision every day. <laughs> the one good decision that you can make that is very practical is change the subject. Because when you change the subject, you change your fortune. And it's worth looking into the science of improved consciousness. You can see it for yourself because you are the consciousness. You get to watch it and observe it personally. That when you improve your consciousness, you improve everything else about your life. And when you try to improve the external world around you, what do you get? Suffering. This is the definition of suffering. Try to improve the world around you and adjust it to your own sense of comfort. This is why sometimes sadhus, you'll notice they travel. It's because when one stays in one place, the tendency is to organize everything around one's comfort and desires. And when all that changes, then you suffer. You say, that's not comfortable for me. Well, this material world is not a comfortable place. But there's one thing you can change, and it's not the external world, it's your own consciousness. And that's why this is called the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. 
if you do this one thing, change the subject. Change what you're listening to. Change what you're talking about. If you make this one decision, it will change your consciousness and that will revolutionize your world. That will change everything about you because you don't see the world the way it is. You see the world the way you are. And the way you are is dependent on what you're hearing about. You see things in a certain way. Some people are so ignorant when they talk. They talk about how this is my body. But it's not your body. You're not your body. You're actually a spiritual being trapped within the body at this particular time. And some people are ignorant enough to say, this is my house and this is my family. That is not your house and that is not your beautiful family. It does not belong to you. If it did, it would exist forever, but it won't. It didn't exist before you were born in this world and it won't exist after they or you leave. And some people are ignorant enough to say, this is my country. It is not your country. Because you may be born in America today and born in North Korea tomorrow. <laughs> And that is what is called a fact. And that is what the Bhagavad Gita is presenting, is facts. The facts are that the body is changing from boyhood to youth to old age. And at the time when you leave the body, you're going to get another body. That is called a fact. That is not religion. That is not belief. That is a fact. So if one is intelligent, Krishna says, He'll use his decision-making process, freedom, free will, means you have decisions to make. You get to decide to change the subject. Because when you change the subject, I'm not convinced. When you change the subject, and if you walk out of here tonight, someone grabs you by the arm and says, what was this speech about? What was that guy talking about in there? You'll say, and when you get in the car, they turn on the radio, and some guy comes on and he's talking about sugar puffs and all kinds of other stuff, you'll say? And when you get home and someone turns on the television, you'll say? From television to Srimad Bhagavatam, from the radio to Hare Krishna Mahamantra. It works everywhere at all times and all places. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam it said, Etavan eva jignasam tattva jignasu natmana anvayav yatarekyabhyam yatsyat sarvata sarvada. Lord Krishna told this to Brahma. It's the original, one of the original four seed verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And that is that this formula changed the topic change your fortune, change your consciousness, is not just good for church. It's not meant just for church. It's not when you come into the church that you change the subject. It's meant in all times, all places, in all circumstances. Both directly and indirectly. In all parts of one's life, one is meant to change the subject. And this is the standard of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And what is, has been brought to us by the founder Acharya of Iskand, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who you see sitting on this Vyasasan, that is the esteemed seat of Vyas. He has taught the simple process through which anyone in any circumstance in life can practically change the subject and therefore change their fortune in life. He has recommended that people take up at home, in their car, on their boat, on a mountain, in a valley, wherever you are, the chanting of the Maha Mantra. This is a bona fide process passed down. It's a Vedic mantra, which is directly the names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the Maha Mantra goes like this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. The subject of this mantra is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all his energies. And if one simply says the mantra over and over again, Prabhupada taught, 
then one will come to the perfection of life. And this was the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is he, he's passing on to us. So this is one recommendation that will change your life, every aspect of your life. If you incorporate this chanting into your life on a regular basis, then you'll notice immediately a change in your consciousness, magically, mysteriously, and very quickly. So chant the Maha Mantra. It is 16 words and 32 syllables. Ramananda Sakha Prabhu will put it up on the screen so we can observe that and count how many words and syllables are there within the mantra. There it is. Now, the other thing you can do is sing this with your family. You get the family together and you have a sing-along. <laughs> and you all sing the Maha Mantra at home. You bring out your instruments if, you ha if you're musicians or you can bang on a pot. If you get a wooden spoon and get a nice pot out of the kitchen, it makes a nice instrument. You can bang on the pot. Uh, wake up the neighbors. Try to get up early. It's a lot of fun. Um, you can sing the Maha Mantra together with your family. The pets will come running in. Everyone will enjoy. And just by that one process, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, you'll attain all fortune in life. And Srimad Bhagavatam similarly says, Although the age of Kali is full of faults, people are crossing the oceans just to kill each other in this age. That's their whole idea. Uh, let's fight each other, even though we're from the same species and we're also all spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna. Let's have one big fight on the whole planet and kill each other off. That's the idea in the age of Kali. Therefore, it's said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, age of Kali Yuga, Kalir Dosha Nidhe Rajan, it's an ocean of faults. And the ocean is rising, everybody, if you hadn't noticed. Kalir Dosha Nidhe Rajan, Astahikum Mahadguna. But he brings the good news, there's one good quality about the age. If you just do this one thing, chant Hare Krishna, then you'll attain the highest benefit and you'll be able to cross over this ocean of faults in the age of Kali Yuga. Now, there's a method for chanting, uh, which is called numerical strength. And this is yoga. If you want to become serious about it, you can take the chanting, which is written on the board there. This, when you, there's a dot under the S, it's pronounced sh. So Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's count them, that's 16 words, 32 syllables. If you chant those clearly and just listen to the syllables, nothing else is needed. All change of consciousness will take place. Make that the subject of your attention. And everything will happen magically, mystically, quickly, and automatically. And if you count how many times you're doing it every day and keep a score, this is what the sadhus do. Sankhya purvaka nama gana natibi kalava sanikrito. The elevated spiritual people, they realize that this is the topmost subject matter in the whole universe. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Nam vina kichu nahiko oro. There's no other subject matter to be looked at in this material world anywhere. That's what Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying. Is that an extreme statement? No. It's true. It's just a fact. So if you take your time every day, you can follow in the footsteps of the great sadhus. You don't have to be one. You don't have to be a great sage or a great sadhu, but if you follow in their footsteps and just try to do as many Hare Krishna mantras as you can every day, pretend you're a sadhu for five minutes, ten minutes, two hours if you really want to go for it, then you'll follow in your footsteps and you'll get the same result that they've gotten. So if you count, Sankhya means to count, Sankhya Purva Kanama Gana Natibi, count how many times you say the Hare Krishna mantra every day and keep a little scorecard on your computer or on paper and keep up the same pace and then try to increase and don't go below what you've done. What do you think? Possible? It's altogether possible. We count a lot of other things, right? Do we? Yes? <laughs> keep track of a lot of other things. So this is the best thing to keep track of. And if you do this one practice, now I would recommend at least start with 10 mantras a day. So if you do just 10 mantras a day, that's a beginning point. 
And if you do 108 mantras a day, you're really on the path. So first I'll teach you how to do 10 mantras a day. Many of you already know. But there's a simple way to count on your hand, because your hand has these little spaces in them, you see? And in between your ring finger tip and base, there's a little spot. Please place your thumb on that space. That's one. Now place it on the lower segment. That's two. Now move it over to the bottom segment of your little finger. Three. Middle. Four. Top. Five. Up to the ring finger top. Six. Over to the middle finger. Seven. To the index finger. Eight. Middle of the index finger, 9. Bottom of the in index finger, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? Now you have another hand, correct? Hopefully. You can, once you finish 10 on one side, you can hold right here on the other side. That's one set of 10, two set of 10. You get the idea. You're all engineers, most of you. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you can go around and count 100 and then do eight more mantras and you've got 108. And this is what we call one round. If you can do one round a day, you're in the super category of following in the footsteps of the great sages. If you can do 10 also, this is a very good start. Do 10 a day. Everyone can say, that's very easy. But actually after three days, four days, five days, six days, the mind will drag you in some other direction. I don't have time to do 10 mantras. You don't have time not to do 10 mantras according to the Shastra because time is shorter than we think. So let's try together to do 20 mantras. Is that okay? If you need a drink of water, take one now. Take a deep breath, relax, shake off any shakatashura demons that are hanging around. Now first, to yourself, say a little prayer, or a big prayer, to Krishna, asking, please remove any obstacles within my heart, any bad habits that you have that are blocking your devotional service, just say, please remove them from my heart. Take, take a minute to play, pray deeply, just try it. Close your eyes, pray to Krishna, he's the Supreme Personality of God. And now, Ramana Dasaka, if you'll put up the 18th mantra of the Sri Shapanishad, we'll just say this together because if you weren't able to get a good prayer, here's one that you can say regularly before you chant, before you go to sleep at night, that is right from the scriptures. And there are many that you can take right from the scripture, a prayer that you can say right before you begin your chanting. From the Sri Shapanishad, when you Get home and you open your Sri Shapanishad book and go to mantra number 18. You can say this and let's say it all together. First, the uh, English, please. O oh my Lord, as powerful as fire, O oh omnipotent one, now I offer you all obeisances falling on the ground at your feet. O oh my Lord, Please lead me on the right path to reach you. And since you know all I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions to my past sins so there will be no hindrance to my progress. And now, please push, put your finger in position in number one. And number one on the other side also, because we're going to go to 20. 20 mantras, and you'll have to count, of course. I don't have to tell you. Uh, we'll count on your right hand the individual mantras and the sets of mantras that you do on the left hand, okay? And we'll chant in unison and 
Just give full attention to the mantra, change the subject. Okay. First, let's say the Panchatapha Ma mantra, I'll say it one time, and then I'll say it, and you please repeat in segments. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita. Gadadhara. Shivasari Gaura Bhaktarinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Ten more, keep going. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, the Bhakti scriptures say, Nama Chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shuddho Nitya Mukto Binatvam Namanamino. That the name of Krishna will transform you just the way the philosopher's stone, whatever it touches, it becomes transformed into something most valuable. So, whatever we are, wherever we are in our life, if we stay in touch with the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, our lives will be transformed, our fortune will change. The name is alive, he will reciprocate. We are not dead stones and Krishna is not a dead stone. But he's actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead who fully reciprocates with those who turn their attention toward him. So by giving attention to Krishna, through listening to his name and carefully listening to the syllables, investigating with your mind and intelligence what is in this mantra by hearing the sound over and over again, and remembering being fortified by the words of the great sages who are, who are very elevated souls. They have all knowledge, but they choose this path to turn their attention towards the holy name of the Lord. And they say that all the scriptures, all the shrutis, they're pointing to this mantra, which contains the personal names of God. Be fortified by knowledge of that, and then give yourself permission to turn fully towards the name. And don't let your mind go shopping elsewhere. Because it'll take a little basket and say, I'm going to go elsewhere and fill it up. But just say, everything you need is there in the name, and Krishna knows more than you do what you need. The name is complete. There's nothing lacking. Unlike all the other things you can think of in this world that will leave you wanting, that will leave you feeling incomplete, this, the Bhakti scriptures say, Purna Shudho, Niti Mukto. The name is completely liberated. It's not from this world. It's fully perfect. And it is the same as Krishna himself. There's no difference at all, except for one small difference. And that is that Rupa Goswami in his poem to the Holy Name says that the Name is even more merciful than Krishna, if you can conceive of such a thing. Because he'll come with you wherever you go, and no matter what trouble you're in, no matter how much anxiety you're in, if you simply take shelter of the Name, then he'll come to you immediately and protect you, and bring your mind back to the spiritual world. That's the power of the Holy Name. So this is uh, one thing that our founder Acharya recommended, and that is every day you count the number of mantras that you do. And you make a little mark, and you don't go below. You stay at a certain level, and then you try to increase gradually. Because just by doing this one thing, your whole life will improve. Change the subject. Change your fortune. Change your fortune. Make this your subject. Now the other way to do this is to sing Hare Krishna. If you play an instrument, you can play the instrument and you can sing along with it. Right now we're going to try singing 
the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra would use this harmonium, it's a European instrument, and this uh, ancient instrument from Bengal called a coal. And we have a few, we have a um, famous cartolist in the front row, Avantika, and Mukharavind, who will keep uh, rhythm along with the drum. We'll hear the melody of the harmonium and we'll sing out loud in a call and repeat fashion the Maha Mantra. So this is known as Sankirtan. So Kirtan means Kirti. It means to, to increase the fame of the Lord. Sing the names of the Lord out loud in his pastimes. And when you say Sankirtan, it means we do it all together. Then it becomes even more powerful. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirishesha Shunyavadi Paschatyate Shatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Radhara Shivasadi Gora Bhaktarina Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ni Thai go Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Ni Thai go Hari Bo Kape Manande Prikishoy Harmonium Let's hear for our cartel players For the Hare Krishna singers for the Hare Krishna dancer in the back corner. Go Prima Nandi! Nithai Gaura Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nithai Gaura Hari Bol. Go Prima Nandi! And I just want to check in and see if you remember the topic <laughs> of today's talk. Okay, thank you very much. I feel happy. I feel in these days when there are so many messages, the things have to be very simple and something we can take with us that's practical, that you can use, that you can work, that you can direct your fingers towards. When you're walking in the wrong direction, your mind will be fortified because it'll come back to this time we had together when all the devotees came here with determination to listen to Krishna Kata, to talk about Krishna, chant about Krishna, and then somewhere you'll find the strength in your heart to make that decision, to change the subject. Because I guarantee you, as soon as you walk out these doors, the subject will change automatically. When you leave Vrindavan Dham and you drive into Delhi, the subject changes within a few hours. And instead of Radhe Radhe, everyone's saying Rupi Rupi. <laughs> and everywhere you go in the world, some subject is coming up about danger, about terror, about fear. 
And the Bhagavatam says, if you just change the subject and you turn towards Krishna, there'll be no more fear in your heart. There'll be no more danger for that person who's always turning the subject towards Krishna. And there'll be no more anxiety. And Narada Muni has brought a personal testimonial. He's saying, it worked for me. I was just a little boy born in obscurity, and I got the subject changed for me by some great souls, and I kept it on that channel. And now I've attained the best thing in life, and everybody else can too. So this is the Hare Krishna movement. It's very simple. It's changing the subject matter that we're listening to on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis, and we have the right thing to tune into. This philosophy does not leave you with nowhere to turn. It says, turn towards the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, turn towards the Bhagavad Gita, and turns towards the Srimad Bhagavatam. And now we're going to turn towards the deities. Because we can always turn whichever way we want. We're going to put away the, all the asans. We're going to stand up so we can dance. This is a dance party coming up here. It's not a stand-around party, it's a dance party. So get ready to dance, shake off any. If you're not a dancer, you can stand near the side or the back, but let all the dancers free, don't block their way. And we're going to chant the Hare Krishna Mantra until the cows come in the door. Thank you, Hare Krishna.